Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon's Stuff. Today, from the car, we have an unpackaging. So, pretty excited about this. We're gonna be opening this up with the Devo Knives Growler. Get right into this. This is a knife that I've been wanting to get my hands on for a while. Almost died on my way to the post office today. It snowed last night, and the NMDOT bunch of useless airbags they haven't plowed the roads yet so it's 11 30 in the morning and it's about a seven mile drive from the place the post office for me and you know pretty pretty snowy you know it, it, it snowed a little bit last night and yes we are using a cowboy hat as a phone stand because we are so professional here on the Gideon Stuff YouTube channel. Um, so anyways, I'm, I'm driving along. It's pretty snowy, icy, slushy. And I'm taking my time, you know. I grew up driving in snow. I know how to drive in snow. So I'm trucking along 35, 40 miles an hour. And some smooth brain troglodyte in a Honda just zooms around me. They, they, I guess they thought I was going too slow. Zoom around me. And they went spinning. And I almost clipped my truck. It was almost a bad deal. They went off the road. I kept driving. If they're still there when I get back, I'll pull them out. Update on the smooth blurring troglodyte. Uh, I did see her when I came back. Uh, pull over on the side of the road. And so I stopped. And I got out and I asked her, hey, you know, do you need any help? Uh, it wasn't the same place where she ran off. I pulled over and I said, hey, uh, any help? She's like, you're the person that I passed. You didn't even stop and help me. I was like, well, you know, you need anything? No. And she sped off. So, you know, some people. At least I don't have to deal with kamikaze Karen anymore. I mean, gosh. There's some dangerous people on the roads. Anyways. The knife we're looking at today is a CJRB, and I gotta say, these new boxes, dang, CJRB is stepping it up. Now we got a pouch inside. Ooh. Oh, and look, it's got like a little uh, dongle on there so I can hang it from something if I so desire. Open this bad boy up. And, ooh. Oh, ooh, it's like fuzzy inside. This is a really nice pouch. Like, dang. Snacks. Oh, look. Oh, they sent me two snacks. Well, isn't it my lucky day? But this pouch is really nice. Like, look at all the... It's like... Bougie. I like that. Oh, and the lid says something. Oh, it's the story of CGRB. Here, I'll hold that there. And if you want to, you can pause and read that. If that's edifying to you in any way. All right, so the knife we're looking at today... You guys probably know what it is. It was only a matter of time before I got this knife. This is kind of a, a birthday present for me. It's a couple days for my birthday, so I got this knife. and uh, It's a CJRB Pyrite. And this was a special run that Artisan did. So this is a steel frame lock, or uh, not frame lock, it's a button lock. This is a steel version. And I got it in this brassy color because it's called the Pyrite. Let's flick it out. Stonewash blade. Gosh, it's a gorgeous stonewash. Oh my gosh. A little bit of button stick, but I don't mind that on a button lock. Oh my gosh. That is... There's weight relief in there. It feels great. Let's get a close-up look at that. Look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? Man, that's sexy. So yeah, you get like the, the brassy color, but it's um, it's not brass, it's steel, so it's not super heavy. Super good ergonomics. Perfect size for EDC. Man, that's gorgeous. Perfectly centered. Thumb studs are placed excellently. No blade play. Dang. I wish I'd had this in 2022, because it definitely would have been on my knives of the year list. Uh, I will say I was kind of surprised when I went to Artisan's website and they had this labeled as the um, brass color. 
Come on, it's pyrite. And yes, you guys know I'm a geologist, so stuff like this gets me super excited. CGRB's like one of my favorite companies because I love knives, I love geology, and they name a lot of their knives after geology stuff. So here is a chunk of pyrite. They match up fairly decently. That's why I wanted to get this version, because nerd stuff. Speaking of nerd stuff, let's talk about nerd stuff. So pyrite is a sulfide mineral. Uh, it's sometimes called fool's gold or iron pyrite, which to me feels a little bit redundant. Um, the chemical formula of pyrite is FeS2, so that's one iron, two sulfurs, or iron disulfide. And so calling it iron pyrite, I mean, there, there's no other pyrite. So calling it iron pyrite is kind of like calling water hydrogen water. Um, it just seems a little bit unnecessary, redundant. Um, I'm not sure. Um, actually, actually, I do know why they do that. Okay. Okay. Wow. I can't believe I remembered this. Um, so many, many years ago, all sulfide minerals were called pyrite or pyrites. So if you had a copper sulfide, it was copper pyrite. If you had a magnesium sulfide, it was magnesium pyrite. And so iron pyrite obviously was the FES2. And so, yeah, I guess that term is just because we don't do that anymore. Pyrite is only nowadays only applies to FES2. So... Yeah, so I guess it's I guess it's a term that's just left over from ye olden days. I might have to fact check myself on that, but I I remember I remember he, I remember learning that uh, at one point all sulfide minerals were just called pyrite to different types. So that's why it's sometimes called iron pyrite. It's just a an outdated term. All right, you know sometimes talking out loud helps to um. To, to, to jiggle, uh, the little gray says, as Hercule Poirot would say, you know, get your, get your mind working, right? So, okay, cool. So the other name for pyrite is fool's gold because only a fool would ever mistake pyrite for gold. They are not really all that similar. They're, they're very superficially similar. Basically, they have the same color. Gold and pyrite have kind of the same color, this yellow color. Uh, they have a very similar, well, they have the same luster. And for those of you who don't know, luster is uh, a mineralogical term for the way a mineral reflects light. And um, there's a lot of different types of lusters, pearly, vitreous, earthy, um, all of these different types. And some of them are honestly a little bit... Difficult to pin down. I have seen three skilled geologists look at the same rock, and one of them said, that's a pearly luster, and the other said, it's vitreous, and the other said, it's soapy. So some of them are a little bit up for interpretation, but two that I think pretty much everyone agrees on are earthy, which means it's kind of a matte. It doesn't reflect light all that much, you know, like kind of like dirt. And then uh, metallic, which is, well, metallic because metal. And so gold and perlite both have a metallic luster. Um, they can occur in very uh, similar environments, um, hydrothermal uh, veins and, and things like that, but they have vastly different properties. And one of the easiest to identify just from a hand sample is hardness. Gold has a hardness of about 2.5. So if you find gold that is, um, well, let's say if you find a, uh, a thin kind of veneer of gold on a, a quartz vein or something, it, you, with your fingers, you can bend it and mash it and, and stuff like that. Pyrite has a hardness of about 6 to 6.5, which is around the hardness of steel, um, you know, that's a whole other can of beans, actually, is, is steel hardness. Um, because I learned 
what I was taught was that steel was a hardness of five. And so this is how, you know, when you find different minerals, you can test their hardness, scratch them with a knife or something. Uh, fingernails are hardness of about two. And <clears throat> so, you know, you can use these different things to test hardness. If you look up the Mohs hardness of steel, you'll get answers varying from four to 6.5. And I would absolutely love to one day work out how Rockwell hardness affects Mohs hardness. Because in my personal life, I've discovered that if I have a mineral that I'm testing and it's, I'm using like a Swiss army knife, Swiss army knife metal clocks in around a four or 4.5. You know, if I have a mineral that I know the hardness of, I've tested this in, a, in lab several times just because, you know, I'm kind of a steel nerd. So I'm interested in that. So Victorinox knife, steel and tools, usually clock in around four to 4.5. I've tested other uh, steels kind of um, like more, uh, I don't know, kind of like simple budget steels um, around the five to 5.5 5 mark. And then I've had some really hard steels like a S110V that was able to scratch a mineral of a harness of about six or 6.5. So, a well-hardened steel, the, the way I always do it is a well-hardened steel will have a hardness of about five to six, somewhere between there. And if you have a softer, simpler steel, that's probably about four, 4.5. And maybe if you have a super steel that's hardened to 64, <coughs> excuse me, HRC, you know, maybe you can score a little bit higher, but um, we got way off track. I'm so sorry, guys. Anyways, gold is super soft. Pyrite is fairly hard. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Mo's hardness scale, it goes from one to 10, one being talc. You can take that stuff and like just scratch it with your fingernail, powder it with a feather, basically. Um, and then you can, uh, uh, the hardest naturally occurring uh, mineral we know of is diamond. So that's a 10. Uh, titanium, I know, for example, comes in about, in terms of hardness, about an eight or something like that, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe that's enough nerding out. Um, steel or gold and pyrite are not the same thing. If you're looking for gold, you know, don't mistake it for pyrite. The easiest way to tell is pyrite's much harder. Um, also in my experience that they, they do tend to, um, uh, I mean, you can find gold nuggets, but uh, they're mostly rounded over. Even though gold and pyrite have the same crystal system, they're both isometric. Um, gold tends to form uh, more massive, like, lumpy chunks better than pyrite does. You can see here pyrite is forming uh, geometric. <laughs> Let's focus on that camera. The pyrite tends to form, that's nah, not going to, but these uh, like geometric cubes and, and stuff. Um, and yes, I did just have that piece of pyrite lying around. I've got all kinds of stuff here. I've got <laughs> some schist with garnets in it. Got some soda light here in my truck. Here's a bunch of quartz and barite. Got fossils in here. There's a little bit of Volcanic something, pretty sure that's a scoria. Here's an andesite. Nice little feldspar crystals in there. Look, we just name dropped scoria and feldspar, two other models offered by CGRB. But, yeah, that's uh, that's probably about it. <laughs> I know we kind of went off on a tangent, but a uh, really, really cool knife. I'm very excited to have this one finally. I love that I was able to get it in this version, so that kind of tickles my my nerdy habits. But um, yeah, it feels like a really solid uh, EDC knife. I can't wait to use it and uh, enjoy it. I, I'm pretty sure I will enjoy it very, very much. Simple, simple looks, um, but you know what? It's simple done right, and uh, yeah, I will enjoy it quite a bit. So. That's going to be it for today, folks. Um, hopefully, you came for the knife and learned a little bit of geology. But, uh, yeah, there we go. I've been Gideon. 
Uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Adios.